Okay, we're alive. Hey, hang on. Oh, forgive me. I was just finishing up. No matter what you do, I'll tell you what, it's almost impossible not to be shiny. So good morning. Let's see if we can adjust this light a little bit. And let the words fall out. So this is a song, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with it, um, Brave. And it's about being brave. And if you listen to the words, um, it's about being brave enough to let the words fall out, to say what you wanna say. And I think that's important for, for these types of conversations. Um, so I'm gonna invite you to let the words fall out. Um, comment below. So let me just pause this, and then we are going to jump right in. So first of all, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for jumping on. Thank you for all of the comments that I know that you're going to share. I really appreciate it. Um, I really want these conversations to be just that, um, areas of discussion, areas of conversation, things that we can just talk about and think about and maybe shift our perspective on. Um, so this is how loss affects us. And I put this, this series of lives together um, specifically because one, I wanted to let you guys know who I was and I wanted to be able to let the words fall out and say the things that are on my mind, say the things that we're all kind of thinking about because, you know, I am not unique in the, in, in some of the feelings that I have, right? Yes, I'm definitely a unique person. Um, I'm sure you can all attest to that, but, but there's so much similarity. And so that's what I want to embrace is that similarity. Hey, Brian, thank you for joining. I appreciate you taking time. Um, I hope you get in a hike later today, but I know it's going to be a hot one. So we're talking about how loss affects us. And, and when I set these, um, lives up, it's really to explore all things relating to loss and how that loss affects our day-to-day -day lives. So not just something that we think about when we're in a back room and we close the door and we think about our loss and we think about forgiveness and we think about, you know, the things that are really, really important. I'm talking about what happens when you're walking through your life and you want to really be able to embrace all of it. And it's very easy for a lot of us to not want to talk about loss. We don't want to talk about the things that are hard. Um, but I do this because it's really important. And for whatever reason, God has given me some gift to be able to talk about the things that are really hard with people. And so I feel honored and privileged to be able to do that for all of my clients. So as I was saying, I think it's safe to say that we've all been affected by some type of loss at some point in our lives. And likely you're experiencing loss right now, right? We're all kind of locked in, so we're experiencing loss there. Um, maybe you've lost a job. Um, maybe you are going through a divorce. 50% of us, including me, have been through the divorce process um, um, or are going through the divorce process and talk about loss. Um, let's just take a moment, like, wow, like intense loss. Um, maybe you've lost somebody that you love. Again, it's loss. And none of us are immune. And I think that that's important to know. And I think that that's one of the reasons why, you know, we really need to talk about it is because it's going to affect all of us. And so whether or not you choose to look at it is really up to you. And if you're here and you're watching this, thank you for doing that, because that's what makes the world, you know, honestly, a better place. I'm with you, Brian. Divorce is an absolute roller coaster. <laughs> um, but I think that, you know, the good thing about the roller coaster is eventually it does stop or at least it slows down. Um, but it's hard to hard to believe that early in the in the process. And it kind of 
it goes up and it goes up and it goes up and you're like, oh, is this ever going to end? And then things start to calm down a little bit. Um, but if your experience is different, let me know that too. So when I ask you about loss and we talk about all these things, you know, Brian, for you, divorce comes up. But, what, you know, what else comes up? Um, and when I think about the loss that I've experienced in my own life, I think I get that uncomfortable feeling that shows up in your stomach or in your chest. For some people, it shows up in your throat. Um, but it's this, this feeling of, you know, loneliness and emptiness. Like you had something once and now it's been taken away. And that's in essence what loss is. So it's that emotion and that feeling. And again, it's pervasive throughout our lives. I mean, you can't have wins without losses, just like you can't have dark without light. You can't have happiness without sadness. Um, but when it comes to loss, you have something or you had something and then it was taken away. And so it's just gone, right? So if you, you know, if you've ever been laid off or fired from a job, that feels, that's intense. That's a loss. I mean, no matter who you are, I don't know anyone who hasn't experienced that. And no matter how good you feel about yourself, like that's a loss. Um, and you know, when you're married and now you're divorced or now you're separated, like there's a loss there. And, you know, you have to be able to grieve that loss. So that's why it's so critical to the grief process. Um, and if you've lost someone that you love, it's like this presence, right? You had this person with you and now that person is gone. And there's this big, you know, think of it as a, it's, it's like a black hole, right? It's a void. Um, and it leaves that emptiness. So for me, it also shows up sometimes as betrayal. Like I should have this now, but I don't. And there's no control. I have nothing to do about it. And so I feel betrayed. Right. I wanted to have the mystical, magical rainbow sunshine and unicorns marriage with the house and the picket fence and the two and a half kids and the dog. And, you know, life doesn't work out like that, um, at least not for many of us. <laughs> so it's easy to feel like you've been betrayed um, because in some ways I think maybe you have. You had an expectation um, and then it was gone. So. If you know what I'm talking about, thank you, Brian, for letting me know. Anyone else, let me know how loss shows up in your life. What kind of loss are you feeling right now? What's coming to mind? Just drop it in the comments um, and let everybody else know that you're not alone. So we're talking about loss. Um, and when you talk about loss, it, it lends itself to the conversation around forgiveness. And loss is taking us out of control. When we feel loss, we're out of control. I tend to be a control freak. If you're a control freak, say yes, yes in the comments um, because you know what I'm talking about. But, you know, you can feel like life is happening to you instead of for you. Um, and that's an uncomfortable feeling. So forgiveness, um, and that's the main conversation for today, is about letting go of that and freeing yourself up from the pain and the hurt of whatever that loss is. Um, <laughs> Jasmine, my fellow control freak. I love it. I love it. Yeah, that's why we're friends. <laughs> it's because you're a control freak just like me. Um, <clears throat> so as I was doing some research, because um, we all kind of know what forgiveness is, but I wanted to dive into the literature and see what I could find. And I found some work by a guy named Fred Luskin, and he has nine steps that lead you to forgiveness. Now, I'm certainly not going to go through all nine of the steps, but there were a couple that I wanted to spike out because I thought they were interesting. Um, his step number four was, and I'm reading it here, is, you know, get the right perspective on what is happening. 
Um, and he talks about how the distress that you feel is actually coming from hurt feelings, from physical upset um, that you're suffering now. And what he talks about is the feeling is in the moment. You're feeling the moment now. If the loss happened before, you're feeling the moment, the, the loss now. Um, and so his step eight says, instead of focusing on your wounded feelings, focus on what you have, right? So it's easy when we're in loss and we're having all of those emotions. And Brian, yes, Fred Luskin, um, you can look him up. You can just Google him. Um, that's where I found it. <laughs> Thanks to Google. Um, and you can, you know, focus on what you have. And that can be really hard to do particularly when you're in the early stages of loss, um, and when you're in the early stages of grief, whether it's, you know, the day you get fired, you're not gonna feel grateful. You're not gonna be able to say, oh, well, at least, you know, I did have a job, right? Those, that, that's just not realistic. But as you move away from the loss and a little time goes by, it's about focusing on, you know, don't hold on to that. Focus on what you do have. Um, and what that will do is it'll take away some of the power that you're giving it. Um, because when you hang on tightly to any type of loss, no matter what it is, right? Let's think about, you know, anger for the person that you're in the middle of a divorce with. Like, talk about anger. There is not an anger. I'll tell you what, it's an intense anger, right? That this person, and I was thinking about this this morning just in my own relationship, right? This person that you've committed and devoted your supposedly entire life to, and you expected this to go forever, right? Because we, when we get married, we don't think we're going to get divorced, and then situations change and things happen. And that takes away a lot of power. And so we, we get angry, right? And now you're like angry at the person who you committed to spend your life with, who's supposedly the one person that you chose out of all the million people to get married to. And now it's over. Anger. I had a lot of anger. There's all kinds of other emotions, but anger comes up for me. Um, I'm still releasing it, you know, and it's been a couple years and it's, you know, it's a process. It really, really is. Um, step nine was remind yourself of your heroic choice to forgive. And what I liked about this was two things. One, I liked the word heroic. And Deb, if you're out there, Deb runs uh, Heroic Women Warriors. So if you're a heroic woman and you want to join her group, find her on Facebook. She's amazing. She helps women gain confidence. Um, heroic, right? So it's a heroic, but it's also a choice that in all of this, in grief, in life, we always have a choice, right? We live, we have more freedom than anyone anywhere else in the world. And it's a choice to forgive. So I like when somebody said it's a verb. Forgiveness is a verb. It's something you do. It's something that you choose. And it's heroic because it's really easy to hang on and make other people wrong and be angry about it and spew things like hatred. I mean, we all can see it's easy to go online and disagree with somebody's political opinion and spew hatred. And I see it all the time, but thank goodness, like I've been eliminating that from my Facebook posts. So I don't see it half as much as I used to because I don't need that in my life. I don't know about you, but we can also get sucked in by the drama right? And by our need to be right and our need to prove somebody else wrong, because if I can prove that you're wrong and let me tell you the, you know, a hundred ways why, you know, Trump is awful or a hundred ways why Joe Biden is, you know, not cognizant enough to actually be president, right? Whatever you think, whatever side you land on, it doesn't matter. It's that we all have independent views 
and there isn't a right or wrong. So it's more about staying in the conversation and not trying to prove your position rather than maybe accepting where somebody else is coming from and where they're at in their life, on their journey with what's going on with them. So <laughs> haters going to hate. Yes, haters going to hate. Uh, I don't want haters. I don't want haters around. Um, okay, so let's see. Failure to forgive hurts you more than anywhere else, right? So I'm sure a lot of you have heard of, you know, Buddha's quote that says, hanging on to anger is like drinking poison and hoping that the other person is going to die, right? When you hang on to all of this, you're really hurting yourself. And I don't want that for you. I want you to be able to say, this is the situation. You know, and when you forgive, forgiving doesn't mean you've forgotten. Forgiving doesn't mean that you're giving them a pass, right? It doesn't mean let people come and walk all over you, right? Been there, done that. Boundaries, <laughs> right? But even though the people who have wronged us and the things that have happened in our lives, you can still choose to forgive. And again, like we said, it's a choice. It's active. So here's my question for you, you know, as we're talking about this, you know, who in your life right now do you need to forgive? Who or what? What do you need to forgive? I'd like you to write it in the comments below. Is it a friend who wronged you? Is it a spouse? Is it the company that you work for? How about your boss? Do you have to forgive your boss for anything? So write down the names that come to mind. Uh, if you don't wanna share them here, I get that. Um, if but write them down somewhere so that you can take it with you today and you can spend a little time and thought about it. Um, good one, good one. So Brian says that he can choose to forgive himself and forgiving yourself, I think is one of the hardest things to do. Um, I don't know, what do you think? Is it, is it easier to forgive someone else than it is to forgive yourself? Mm. So for me, the answer is yes, um, because I tend to be much harder on myself than I do on everybody else. Um, and I let people get away with a lot more than they probably should, <laughs> right? <clears throat> so, but in terms of, you know, when you're, when you're holding on and not choosing to forgive yourself, right? What's happening there is you're putting yourself in a position of weakness. You're, you're allowing the situations or the people or the circumstances outside of you, whether they happened, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, or yesterday, you're giving away your power. And that's why it feels so uncomfortable. Um, and when you're forgiving yourself, you know, ask yourself, well, first of all, how did I get here, right? How did I get in the situation that I had? Um, you know, did I not set clear enough boundaries? Did I let people take advantage of me? Did I put other people first at your own expense, right? So I wholeheartedly believe on serving other people, that's why I do this. But we don't want to get into martyrdom here. Because if you don't take care of yourself, then you're really not serving the people around you. So take a look. If you're one of the people who, like I was, who served everybody else and didn't take care of yourself and poured into other people and then got resentful, because I did this for you, I did this for you. Why are you not nicer? Why don't you appreciate me? I don't get it. Appreciate yourself, pour into you. 
forgive yourself for allowing things that were less than, less than ideal to happen to you. Forgive yourself for the choices that you've made, right or wrong. And I was, I have a friend um, that's in a group of mine in another Facebook group, and her name is Catherine Conlin. Uh, Catherine with a K, not Catherine with a C. She says that's the right way to spell Catherine, but she's wrong. But I'll forgive her. <laughs> so what she says is forgiveness is the first law of healing. That you can't truly heal from the things that you've lost, from your past, from the things that you're grieving until you find forgiveness. Um, and again, I want to reiterate, because I think this is such an important, important point, that forgiveness is not forgetting. It's not forgetting what somebody did or condoning what pe someone did to you to wrong you or condoning what's happened or, you know, offering, you know, any type of excuses, right? So I deal with a lot of mothers who have lost babies and there's so much guilt there and they need to forgive themselves. Um, and it's not about, it's not about forgetting and it's not about condoning or making excuses. It's about sometimes stuff happens that you can't control and it's tough and it's not necessarily your fault, right? I mean, we all, I have a whole nother conversation that I want to have around blame. Um, I wrote an article this week for the Open to Hope website about guilt. So that should be coming up in a couple days. Um, and I'll make sure I post that here in the group when it becomes available. But it's not about any of that, right? It's about, this is about you. Make it about you. And what do you need? And what are you holding on to? And what can you actively choose to let go? And remember that it's a choice. It's up to you. So there's no right or wrong there. It's not judgment. Some people choose to hold on to stuff for a long, long time. But, but why do that? If you can find a way to choose to let go. And if you need support in figuring out how to let go, well, that's what I do. I help people learn how to let go, let go of grief, let go of loss, let go of the anger and the guilt. That's what, that's the gift that I've been given. Um, I'm continuing to learn how to do that more for myself um, because it's a lot easier to do for somebody else than it is to do for yourself. I get that. Um, so, I mean, it's not, you know, it's more of a journey. It's not really a destination. It's more of a journey. And so it's, you know, looking at it and, um, oh, and I have this, this new oil that I'm trying from Young Living, surrender. Mm. For those of us who are control freaks, surrender is a tough one. So I'm calling in the Calvary and, and, <laughs> and using whatever I can to, to help me with my own surrender because I need that. Um, and I also went to the goodtherapy.org website and they're talking about, you know, a lack of forgiveness. And, you know, I just want to read some of their comments because to be honest, you know, who the writer of this, um, so it was called Lack of Forgiveness, if you want to try to find the whole article, um, by goodtherapy.org. But they just, the way they, the words that they've used are better than what I could have said. So I'm going to just read a little bit of this to you because I think it's critical. Um, you know, and some of this is paraphrasing, but it says, you know, feelings of, you know, lack of forgiveness and the bitterness prevents us from being able to fully inhabit the present moment. As we ruminate on the pain that we've experienced and then continually perpetuate our suffering. Right? So failing to forgive, not only does it take you out of the present moment, which we're all doing the mindfulness to try to get back in the present moment, right? But you ruminate on the pain over and over and over. And I love the term. We continually perpetuate our own suffering. Wow. 
But the good news is, is that if we're the ones perpetuating our suffering, that means we can also stop it. Um, he also says our psychological health or happiness depends on our ability to forgive others. But there's an even greater need to forgive ourselves. And it goes on to say that constantly beating up ourselves for something that we've done in the past will not change what happened. Let me reiterate. It will not change what happened. So you can beat yourself up all day long. You know who you are. You know if I'm talking to you. But keep in mind that if you're doing that, it will affect your ability to be happy and to truly love and accept yourself in the now. So it takes you out of the present time. I don't know about you, but I want to be in the present time. I want to be able to look around and love my life and feel amazing about the friendships and the people that I have and the job that I'm so grateful for because I have a full-time job and I'm so grateful for it. Um, and everything that I've been fortunate enough to accumulate um, by way of friendships and, you know, my home and uh, so grateful. Um Here's what I'm going to leave you with. <clears throat> I'm going to leave you with that we are all human beings, and these are his words, not mine. We are all human beings with imperfections and failings that we can learn from. As we open our hearts and begin to forgive and accept the aspects of ourselves that we have previously judged or and rejected, we become more compassionate and loving toward ourselves and toward others. And wouldn't that just be magnificent for more of us to have more compassion in this world today, given the state of everything? Compassion. Trying to see somebody else's perspective realizing that we're imperfect. And when you say something that's completely either inappropriate or mistaken, or sometimes you, the words fall out, like Sarah Burles was talking about in her song Brave at the beginning, sometimes the words fall out and they're not the right words. Forgive yourself. And other people will forgive you too. If you can forgive yourself, other people will forgive you. If you need that forgiveness. So I want you to reflect today on forgiveness. Where are you holding on to it? In what area of your life? Or from whom? Maybe where do you need to clean some stuff up? Do you th have things been left unsaid? Maybe clean those things up. I know I've got a couple. But then choose to get in action. Choose to forgive yourself and others. Find compassion. And move forward with forgiveness. I hope that helps you today. I hope that you enjoyed hearing about forgiveness. Um, I'm gonna have a companion live to this specifically about guilt um, guilt and forgiveness go hand in hand because you need a lot of forgiveness if you feel guilty. Um, so we'll talk more about that, um, likely maybe in next week's video or um, maybe even sooner. So, but I will let you know, I'll give you guys a heads up. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. And please leave comments below. I can't wait to hear from you. I want to learn from you. I want to grow with you. Um, and I want to learn how to be more compassionate with you. And so what that means is I can be more compassionate when I know where you're at. 
and I know what's important to you and if you feel wronged about anything. Those are the things I want to know. So reach out and tell me. Thanks so much for joining today. We will talk to you guys all very, very soon. Bye.